Okay, so let's get to rendering animation. So here I have this uh, very uh, basic scene and uh, we can try rendering it with X-Ray. Now the first thing to care about when using uh, X-Ray for rendering animation is that we should try to bake as uh, less number of objects as we can uh, because uh, X-Ray do it per frame and uh, it can just cause the scene to become a little bit heavy so uh, instead of focusing on the animated objects you should focus on the uh, objects that they cast shadow on and uh, which one is more important or if they are even that noticeable uh, during the rendering so here I think the more than the sphere itself uh, the ground is the part that we should focus on so uh, to set this object as animated you can just select it and press the animated button it is going to add a, a new attribute for you here uh, setting it to zero will disable the animation and setting it to one will enable the uh, animated baking so I can just select it and now if I press the build selected it is going to bake all of these frames for me and as you can see I only uh, have animation till frame 25 so I'm going to limit the range of slider to uh, 25 and now if I bake Okay, and this is the result. We can try baking this object as well, set it to animate it, and just press the build selected. Now for the baking, as you can see this object has a very bumpy uh, lighting uh, on it. That is because usually when you bake with the discourse they consider the normal map uh, in their shadow casting as well. So if you don't want that you can just uh, disable the bump map, do your baking and then just enable it to have the bump map on the reflection but uh, I don't have any problem with it now uh, so let's just leave it at one uh, now an extra tip is uh, if you have a scene with a lot of small objects and your character casts shadow on all of them and you want to uh, have the shadow uh, you can create a simplified object on top of that uh, so here uh, all of my objects are simple so I'm going to just create a copy and combine them. I can hide the original object. Let's set a new material. And I can bake uh, this new uh, object instead. So instead of baking a lot of uh, objects for all of these frames, I can just bake one object and uh, use this shadow for all of them. So since I uh, combined these, combined these objects, they are now having overlapping light map. So I can just say copy layout, or I can just use auto UV. Okay. And now I can set this to animated and bake it. Okay, I can also hide these uh, non-animated objects uh, while baking this one, but uh, I, don't, I don't mind having them right now. So now I can just bring back the original objects. I need to make this uh, uh, overlay mesh a little bit bigger so I can select all the face. Transform component and just make it a little bit thicker. Okay, 
and let's hide this and put this one. Nope, not for the animation. Actually, let's set it to static. Hide this. Build so we don't want the shadow of the animated object uh, on the floor. We can bring back the ball and the overlay uh, mesh. And now what we want to do is to set the light map to transparency. So I can come to the editor and I can bring this here and this is the light map. I can just connect it directly to transparency if I want to, uh, but it doesn't give me a very good control over the contrast of the shadow. So I'm going to just uh, create a ramp and connect uh, this one. Let's create a. Uh, if it is grayscale, I can just connect it directly. But I prefer to create a RGB to HSV and connect it through this. And now I can connect this ramp to the transparency. This way I can control uh, the area of the shadow that I want. I can actually create the same thing for the shadow color as well. So this one is going to just stay, create a copy. And connect this to the UV and set it to color. And now we can control the shadow color. Okay, and just like that. This is a, a much faster method for uh, working with the large scenes. So now let's try uh, doing an uh, animated reflection. To do that, you can select the object at a reflection actor, and it is going to add it in the center of this object. Now we want the reflection actor to follow the object. And to do that, we can select the sphere, and then the reflection actor, constraint, parent. And now they are going to uh, move with each other. And uh, now we can select the reflection actor, set it to animated, and we can just build the reflection. And if we look at the reflection now, the last frame is uh, stuck to the a sphere so you can just select it and apply to mesh and it is going to update the reflection and you can see that it is now animated and the reason that you have to select it and apply it again is um, because right now a reflection actor can be assigned to multiple objects so uh, I didn't want to set it in a way that uh, every time you build a reflection, it goes through all the objects in the scene and try to uh, update their reflection map. So instead, uh, after the baking, you can just select it, apply to mesh, and it is going to uh, update the reflection and make it the really read the animation. 